am Lakshmi Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Welcome to the lecture session of Image Processing. In this session, we are going to discuss two important topics. One is Image Sensing and Acquisition and other one is a simple image formation model. And so, some of the internal topics that we are going to cover are in image sensing and acquisition, we are going to cover different topics like image acquisition by using single sensor and image acquisition by using sensor strips and image acquisition using sensor arrays. So, these three are different but these three are used for image acquisition only different methods so these things we are going to discuss in detail and another important topic a simple image formation model how to represent an image what it should have the levels so all these things we are going to discuss in this session now coming to the first topic image sensing and acquisition. So, in the previous lectures, we have discussed about the fundamental steps in digital image processing. In that, the first step itself is image acquisition. If that first step is not there, that means if image acquisition is not done, that particular image cannot be processed and the next steps cannot be proceeded. So, this image acquisition is one of the important step. So, that is why we need to discuss about this uh, image sensing and acquisition. And coming to the detailed discussion about uh, uh, image acquisition. So, what is meant by image acquisition? It is the process of capturing visual information. Soon as it is captured, then it will be converted into digital format. After converting that image into digital format, then that particular processed image can be stored and analyzed by electronic devices. So, this particular technology will be having applications in various fields like photography, medical imaging, computer vision, remote sensing. So, in all these areas, this image acquisition technique or this particular step plays the major role. Next. So, here the image sensing and acquisition can be done in different ways. That means, there are different configurations of image sensors used in capturing visual information. That means here we will have sensors, that sensors will be acquiring the image. That particular sensors can be arranged in different ways, which comes different configurations of arranging the sensors. Based on that arrangement of sensors, it is classified into different types. One is single imaging sensor. Here the name itself says we will have only single sensor available and next one is line sensor. So, the name itself indicates sensor sensors will be available. That particular sensors will be arranged in the form of a line and next configuration is array sensor. That means here all the sensors will be arranged in the form of an array. So, based on the arrangements of all these sensors, the image acquisition process will be different. Now, we will discuss about all these configurations one by one in detail with the help of examples. Now, coming to the single Imaging sensor, as we have discussed about uh, uh, 
discussing about image sensing and acquisition it is sub topics the first one image acquisition using single sensor it can also be called as single imaging sensor okay so here it will be having only single sensor and that particular sensor will be capturing the entire image in a single exposure that means as soon as you click the entire image will be captured and it will be done with the help of a single sensor only so where this particular single imaging sensor will be used means in some particular applications like uh, digital cameras uh, smartphone cameras in such cameras this single imaging sensor will be used so what will be happening in this means the sensor records the intensity of light of each pixel across the entire image simultaneously so that at a time the information about each pixel will be captured so this configuration is suitable for general purpose photography and the situation where a complete image can be captured at a once so in this particular type of applications this single imaging sensor can be used so if you see here uh, this is the figure which is having a single sensor so here this is the single sensor which will be capturing the entire image simultaneously and extracting each pixel information and here this is the linear motion this particular sensor will be moving in order to capture the information about each pixel of the entire image and here it will be moving in the uh, clockwise direction it will be rotated when it is rotating the information will be capturing in the linear manner and here this is the film where the image is captured so this is what about single imaging sensor and the next image sensing and acquisition configuration is image acquisition using sensor strips this is the second method so here image acquisition using sensor strip strip means it will be in the form of a line where all the sensors are arranged that's why it is called line sensor we have to discuss now how these sensors will be capturing the image here a line sensor is also known as linear sensor or 1d sensor how the capturing will be done in this type of sensors means it is going to capture the information along the single line in an image so instead of capturing the entire image at a time this line sensor will scan line by line for example we can take the general example like scanning a document so the document will consist of uh, some number of lines document and if you want to scan that document that particular document will be scanned line by line so as soon as it scan the first line it goes to the second line and even that second line it will be starting scanning from left to right if it is completed then it goes to the next line it starts scanning from left to right like that each line of the document will be scanned so instead of scanning the whole document at a time the document will be scanned line by line from each line will be captured from left to right so in such a type of applications this line sensors are used so instead of capturing the entire image once the line sensor will scan the scans line by line so the line sensors are commonly used in applications such as document scanning or barcode readers and some other industrial inspection where the capturing of one dimensional data is required here there are two figures 
So in these two cases, the line sensors are used. So here, if you consider, this is the strip where the sensors will be arranged and it will be moving in the linear motion that is first line, second line, third line, fourth line, it will be moving in the linear motion. Okay. So here one image line out per increment of linear motion. So as it is moving in the linear motion, as soon as one line is scanned, it is going to the next line. And this is the image area where the document is available and it is required to be scanned. And here you can see this is another figure which shows the same, same uh, line sensor. Here it will be rotating in the linear motion and here all the sensors will be arranged to this ring in the form of line. And here, as soon as that particular uh, data is captured, it will be converted into 3D objects. So, in such applications, this line sensors will be used. And the next image sensing and acquisition configuration is the third type, that is image acquisition using sensor arrays. So, image acquisition using sensor arrays. We can also call this as array sensor. That means here all the sensors will be arranged in the form of an array. So, here this is also known as 2D sensor. Using this sensor, how the images will be captured means. So, the capture information across a two-dimensional grid of Pixels. We will discuss in detail about this uh, array sensor with the help of the figure. So, this is the most common configuration for image sensors and it will be used in some applications like uh, digital cameras, smartphones and many other imaging devices. So, here in this array sensors, we will be having sensors which are arranged in arrays. Hence, it is going to capture the entire image in a single exposure and that capturing will be done both in horizontal direction as well as in vertical direction simultaneously. So here the most important types of array sensors are one is a CCD, a CCD means charge coupled device and other one is CMOS. So, here CMOS represents complementary metal oxide semiconductor sensors. So, these two are the sensors that comes, array, uh, that comes under this array sensors. So, we will see and discuss this array sensor with respect to figure. Now, so coming to the array sensor. This is the important figure which we have to understand. So, this image represents the digital image acquisition process using array sensor. Here, this is the illumination energy source where the light is coming from and this particular light will be falling on this scene element that is object. When this light falls on this object, that particular light will be refracted, refracted and some of the light may be transmitted through this. If the light is refracted from the object, it will be entering into this imaging system and this is the lens that is available to this imaging system. And from this lens, the particular captured image will be falling onto this array sensor. Okay, so this is the array and here each one will be having its own sensor and if this particular image falls on this imaging plane which consists of the sensors arranged in the form of array, 
that particular sensors are going to capture the entire information from that particular image and it is going to convert it into digital form and here th this is the digital image for this captured analog image so this is the entire discussion about this figure so based on this so the light entering into the lens of camera from here so the light entering into the lens of camera interacts with this sensor array where sensors are available what happens each sensor element is going to convert that particular incoming light from the scene which is in the form of a electrical signal and also it will be having high light intensity so the charges are read out from the sensor array and then it will be converted into digital image so this is the function of this array sensors and these are the three configurations the image sensing and acquisition can be done one is single sensor second one is line sensor and the third one is array sensor but the main theme of all these configurations is image acquisition only and coming to the second topic of this session which is a simple image formation model so when the image is captured it will be in the form of two dimensional and that particular analog signal will be represented in the form of f of x comma y so in this f of x comma y so here this x and y are the two coordinates so here this x and y we will call as spatial coordinates okay and here this f represents intensity level or we can also call this as gray level or simply we can call this f as it represents generally amplitude okay so now so this x and y are the spatial coordinates and f represents the intensity or gray level at this particular point that means generally if we want to represent any image it will be represented for example it can be represented like this okay so here there will be all the values of x that means x will be covering all the rows and here you will have the values of y which represents columns and here generally one by one the values of x starting from x0 x1 x2 x3 so on and the y values will be from y0 y1 y2 y3 so on so here the coordinates present at this particular point will be x0 comma y0 and here x0 comma y1 like this and here coming x1 comma y0 like this the image will be represented and here whatever the elements we are having it will not be seen at this particular pixel so the values will be different so the values whenever the values of this x y and f are all finite positive and discrete then particular image we will call it as a digital image so the range of this f of x comma y in order to call it as a digital image it should be discrete finite and positive so it should be range in between 0 to infinity so the value should be the value of f of x comma y should be in between 0 and less than infinity so the function of f of x comma y completely it is depending on two major components here the two major components are one is illumination and another one is 
reflectance illumination means the light that is falling on the object reflectance means after falling on the object that particular object is going to reflect the light so this f of x comma y is depending on that particular two components one is illumination and reflectance so the amount of source illumination incident on the scene being viewed is called as illumination so the amount of illumination reflected by the objects of the scene is called as reflectance now so we have to learn about this illumination and reflectance as f of x comma y is basically dependent on these two so how to represent this illumination illumination here i that's why it is represented as i of x comma y so in this reflectance the first letter here considering r reflectance is denoted as r of x comma y so totally the product of this illumination and reflectance is f of x comma y so f of x comma y is equal to the product of illumination and the product of reflectance as we have learned the range of this f of x comma y should be 0 to less than infinity we should also see what should be the range of this i and r so the i value will be ranging from 0 to infinity less than infinity whereas here the value of r will be ranging from 0 to 1 so that should be the nature of this i of x comma y and r of x comma y that is illumination and reflectance so based on this what should be the value of gray level for example if you consider any monochrome image mono means one that particular image will be having only one color for example if we consider the gray scale image gray color and the image will be totally consisting of all the shades of gray starting from uh, 0 to 1 that is from black to white the colors present in between this will be the shades of gray so the intensity of monochrome image at any coordinate can be represented as x not comma y not and here the gray level l gray level is represented as l here at that particular coordinates can be written as l is equal to f of x not comma y not so this x not comma y not will represent the spatial coordinates and this f is the amplitude or intensity at this particular coordinates and l represents the gray level so here at what range this l should lie means it should lie between this l minimum and l maximum those are the two ranges we will see what is l minimum and what should be l maximum so as the value of l as we have discussed in order to represent it in the form of digital it should be positive and it should be finite and it should be discrete similarly as this gray level is in between this l minimum and l maximum l minimum should be positive and l maximum should be finite so in order to write the value of l with respect to illumination and reflectance it is the product of illumination and reflectance so l minimum is equal to i minimum into r minimum whereas l maximum is equal to i maximum into r maximum now how to define the values of this l minimum and l maximum especially in the monochrome image or what should be the gray level that is l minimum means minimum gray level and maximum gray level means here this l minimum and l maximum are the two integer values which will be varying in the ranges so we have to call it as a gray scale commonly it can be represented in the form of an interval like l minimum comma l maximum so if you write that what should be the value of l minimum 
L minimum can be zero. And what should be the value of L maximum? It should be L minus one. For example, if the value of L is zero, if the value of L is zero, that particular color will be representing as black. If that value gray level L is equal to the second maximum interval that is l minus 1 then it will be indicating the color as white so if l is equal to 0 it represents black color and if l is equal to l minus 1 some finite value maximum finite value it will be representing the color white whereas the value present between this 0 and l minus 1 interval will represent the shades of this black and white colors on the gray scale so we call all intermediate values present in between this 0 and l minus 1 or the shades of gray varying from black to white now so the topic what we have discussed here is taken from digital image processing textbook uh, which is written by gonzales thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates